Okay, let's take a look at how we can import a DXF file from AutoCAD. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to uh, grab the file off my desktop and then I'm just going to drag it into the CAD window and drop it. And then what this will do is open our uh, DXF file. Now this DXF file came out of AutoCAD. It's a nested sheet and what we want to do is program this file. Uh, I've gotten into a habit of when you're importing geometry like a DXF to not alter the original DXF. So what I'm going to do is just select all the geometry and then I'm just going to uh, copy and paste it into a new CAD file. Okay. So here we have our geometry here. Now another thing that I'm going to do just as a good habit is just to go to utilities and clean up and optimize. Uh, if there's any problems with the geometry, uh, this utility will tell us if there's any double entities or any issues and it looks like uh, this file is pretty good. Uh, so we'll just do that real quick as a, as a check. Now the next step here, we can start programming, uh, but I tend to find myself organizing my uh, geometry a little bit uh, that will help with the programming. Okay, so what do I mean by that? Um, if there's any engraving, I might put that on a layer. If there's any inside pockets, I might put that on a layer. Uh, if there are inside cut cutaways, cut throughs, I'm going to put that on a layer and then the outside cut. So really just a couple of layers to organize the geometry. Okay, um, the first thing I'm going to do is uh, create a layer called stock. Uh, I'll put myself in selection mode. Okay, I'm going to chain select with a shift left click. Okay, that will select the chain. And then to move the geometry over to this layer, I'm just going to right click, modify attributes layer, and then I'll put this on layer one. Okay, so that by doing that, what happens is I can turn that layer off, the visibility of that layer off. Now, the next one I'm going to do is inside uh, pocket. Okay. And uh, we'll notice over here we have these inside pockets. I don't believe these are through cuts. I think these are uh, for part numbering or something like that. Uh, so we'll select them. Again, right click, modify attributes layer inside pocket. Okay, so we've done that. I'm going to add another one. Engraving. Okay, I'm going to select our crazy text here. The reason this text came in um, the wrong way, you can see that there's some weird characters here. Uh, it just means that the font that was used in the drawing um, doesn't exist on my system. Uh, so it uh, substitutes uh, apparently characters here. Okay, so we got the inside pockets uh, isolated. We have our engraving isolated. Okay, uh, the next step here would be to, uh, let's see, our inside cutouts. Okay, so again, this is going to be everything that cuts through. I'm in selection mode and I'm just chain selecting. Now you may be wondering why I'm separating it. What I want to do is control the order things are cut in and I don't want it to cut an outside shape before it cuts an inside shape. So one of the ways I do this is by uh, putting the geometry on their own layers and then uh, going through and programming those layers uh, independently. Okay, so we have this one set up. We're going to move that over to inside cut. All right. And then the last one here is going to be our outside shapes. So we're going to just window pick all of this uh, and we'll move that over to its layer as well. So a little bit of ge geometry preparation, not much. Um, I, I find that um, doing this uh, just helps with uh, getting the project going. Okay. So we can turn them all back on now. All right, so from here we have our geometry prepped. Uh, generally, it's a good idea to anytime you reach a milestone to save. So typically, I would save this file uh, at this point so that uh, if there's any issues or any problems come up, that you can always uh, go back to that milestone. Okay, so now we have uh, we have all of our geometry isolated. The next step is to go to the CAM tab here, and then from there we can create a new job. Uh, this is going to be a milling job running on a three axis machine. Uh, we're going to use the stock wizard here. The stock wizard will look at the part geometry and uh, put a bounding box around it. 
and then uh, you can define what the thickness of that material is, half inch, three quarters, whatever it may be, okay? Uh, so this sets up your stock. Uh, the next step from there is setting up your origin. So where it says set up, uh, set up orientation, coordinate system origin, this is where you're gonna pick your zero. Uh, you click in this window, and then we're just going to pick this bottom corner here. Um, you may zero on the, the bottom of the material. You may zero on the top of the material. Either method is fine. Uh, we're going to go ahead and choose OK at this point. So now we have a, a job set up. So we have a, a milling job attached to a machine, attached to our post. Um, we have our tools here. We could start grabbing tools from the tool library and loading them in our tool crib. Uh, we have our stock in case we need to make any changes to our stock, and then we have our machine setup, which is our zero position. Um, from here, we want to start uh, programming our geometry. So, like I said, if there's any inside pockets, you know, you may want to come in here with a tool and just do a, a little uh, pocket, not a cut through, just a pocket so you have uh, a place to put your text. So, we'll come in, we'll do two axis, select geometry. Okay, I'm gonna window pick all this geometry. Uh, from here, I'm just gonna set a depth, we'll say like 100 thou, uh, and we'll choose okay. Uh, then we can choose a strategy. There's, there's different strategies that you could use. I'm gonna um, try just a, a profile here, uh, just a profile finish. Uh, we're gonna do a 3 8 I'm not sure what that size is. Uh, I probably should have measured this, the, the slot pocket there, but we'll put a 3 8 in here. Um, we can adjust some of our settings. Uh, I'm going to leave all the defaults and just compute it. And you'll see that uh, the tool would, would run around this. Uh, the idea here is to create a, uh, a pocket here uh, so that we have an area to put our text. So th that would be like the, the first group that I would do here. Uh, let's see. We can check the, the order in which it, which it runs in. You can see it does you know, kind of a, a, a different order than you might have expected. Uh, if you want to change the order, you can go to your sequence. You could say cut in the Y direction, or uh, yes, the Y direction and recompute. Uh, let's see here. It still starts in this one, but uh, we should be able to change that. Give me a second. All right, uh, machine sequence. Let's say start in this one here. Let's go in, let's see what X does. Okay, that looks a little better. So it starts at the bottom and then it works its way up to the top. That's fine. If we want this, you can see these all led in from the same position. Uh, you can see this one is leading in from over here. Uh, what we can do is when we're in our geometry selection, uh, to set it the same for all, we could say uh, middle of longest, uh, OK, and recompute. And then now you can see they're, they're all set to the middle. OK, so that one would go in and just kind of uh, pocket out those letters. If we're going to do the engraving now, um, what I want to do is ch change this, this font. So I'm just going to select one, uh, entity modify. I should be able to grab. Uh, I'm just going to do uh, just like a, a Bobcat font, which is like a centerline font. So you could see how I could adjust this. Um, three, uh, I don't know if that's actually just notes for it or if that uh, this is a dado. So this, um, this says three eighths deep dado. Uh, maybe that was just some indication of what's going on uh, for this particular shape. So I'm just going to select all that text out. Uh, if the depth is supposed to be 3 eighths, we can come back into our feature here, go to parameter, I'm sorry, go to our feature and we can make this whatever depth we need it to be and compute, okay? So that one will do those inside pockets. I thought there was engraving there, but it looks like there's dados. Okay, the next one here would be our inside cut. So we did our engraving first. I'm actually gonna take the same feature. I'm gonna copy it and I'm gonna paste it so I can use the same settings. Uh, I'll say um, no to the depth values, all right? I'm gonna go to my geometry, reselect. I can window pick all of these shapes here, all right? Um, again, I'm not sure the thickness of material, but 
uh, you know, I'm going to work from the top down here. So the top is going to be my geometry selection. That's what I want to, uh, that's the geometry I want to select. If I make a mistake, I can remove it. You could select them individually if you wanted. You can chain select it with shift left click. Um, in this case, I just did a window selection and that grabs everything. Okay. To control the start point location, I'm going to do middle of longest. Okay. And then these are all my chain directions. And I want these all going th the same way and they should all be going counterclockwise for an inside cut. Um, again, that can depend on your tooling, whether, you know, you got a, a compression uh, up cut or down cut. Uh, you may want to cut in a different direction. But in this example, we're going to cut uh, counterclockwise for all our inside shapes. So we select all our inside shapes. You know, again, we can set whatever our depth is. Uh, once we're done, we're going to choose OK. All right. From here, we can just uh, right click on our feature and uh, compute. And then that generates all of our toolpath here. Now, again, you can see that the sorting direction, like we cut these in a certain sort, the sort direction here uh, doesn't make sense. So we're going to edit this feature. We're going to go to machining sequence. Uh, let's go closest, I think makes more sense. Uh, we can do zigzag if it needs to. Let's recompute. And then that gives us a, a more uh, organized uh, cut sequence okay so you can adjust your sequence that way so this one we did our dado this is our inside cuts normally I'll name these features too if you uh, right click on it and choose rename you could say uh, dado um, if we right click on this one and choose rename we can say inside cutout uh, I don't it's cut out okay whatever um, and then we can Again, take this feature, copy, okay, uh, paste it. Uh, we'll use the same de debt values. This one we're going to rename. This is going to be outside cutout. All right. Uh, or name it whatever you want. No big deal. Okay. So we'll then turn that layer off. We're going to reselect. Let me turn the stock off as well. Okay. We're going to window pick all this geometry like we did before. This is all our geometry selection. Again, we can set where it's going to start from. We're going to do middle of longest entity. And then uh, by default, it typically will select these shapes um, counterclockwise. You can see that it selects them counterclockwise. When we're doing an outside shape, uh, we want it to go uh, clockwise. So for an outside shape, we want the we want the selection to go clockwise. So we're going to just hit reverse all directions here and that will reverse uh, the direction of all of our profiles, making sure that uh, they're going clockwise. Again, you can adjust your depth as needed. Uh, we're going to say OK and then we'll come to our feature and compute. And then that puts all our tool path to cut the outside shapes. OK, uh, if we want to work on some of the sequencing, we could work on that as well. Uh, but at this point, we've programmed our dado, our inside cuts, and our outside cuts. Okay, uh, you may want to validate it visually. Uh, to validate it visually, you can start a simulation. So we'll say, with the simulation here, you'll be able to uh, to see the cut order. You know where it starts where it ends what direction it cuts in so this is uh to validate exactly what's happening uh everything looks good here the best that i can tell uh so if we're done at this point we can just come over to our cam tree and then post the code for whichever post processor you've selected so that's a quick run through if you guys have any questions um just let me know uh, but that that covers, you know, cutting your dados, cutting your inside shapes and cutting your outside shapes.